example of uh, a stir tank that I did in the past. So this is uh, what you see here is a schematic of a stir tank. So this is a pilot scale system um, of uh, which which has a diameter of about uh, 630 millimeters and a height of 630 millimeters. So this uses a impeller. Uh, so this type of impeller is called a Russian turbine. So this is this has a flat disc uh, with six uh, vertical blades. Once I make a CAD model of this, I, I make a mesh of my geometry. So the mesh is shown here on the right. So because my system is symmetric, I've only considered 180 degree section of the uh, geometry because it saves time. Uh, and I can, uh, I know that the system is symmetric. So this makes sense to use only uh, half of the problem uh, or the numerical domain. So this problem was solved using uh, Eulerian, Eulerian two fluid uh, model uh, framework. Uh, we, we will see some results in the next slide. So these are some of the results that I get once I uh, solve the problem. So on the left here, uh, we see the uh, volume fraction of air. So I have this ring. So this ring is used to inject air in the system. And my system is completely filled with water. So when the air comes up, because my impeller is rotating at 390 RPM, um, it distributes the air throughout the tank. And I see that, you know, my air is fairly well dispersed um, throughout the stirred tank. And we also get information such as sort of mean diameter. So this is uh, one way of representing the mean bubble size in the system. And uh, I'm comparing the predictions from my CFD model against some experimental data from the literature. So you can see that the experimental data at point E, for example, says that the bubble size is 4.1 mm. And my CFD predictions give a value of 4.47 millimeter. And these are two other uh, predictions from other researchers. And you can see that uh, my model that I used uh, to solve this problem gives a fairly well description of what is going on in the system. So this, give me, this gives me confidence that my model gives a fairly good representation of what is going on in the system. And I can use this model to say, for example, you know, see what happens if I increase my impeller rotation speed. How would my distribution of air change inside the system? Or where would I see, you know, smaller and bigger size bubbles in the system. The bubble size distribution here is important because it will tell me what my mass transfer rate is going to be uh, from my gas phase to the liquid phase because depending on my bubble phase, I would, I would estimate the total surface area available for mass transfer. So this gives me very important process description, uh, which again is fairly difficult to get using uh, experimental techniques. I want to tell what this course would be you know, useful for. So this would be useful for undergraduate students in mechanical, chemical, automotive, civil, biotech. I mean, all of these uh, branches of engineering, you uh, come across uh, multi-phase flows uh, very commonly. So taking this course would give an introduction to multi-phase flows and uh, it will also equip, equip you with tools to solve uh, some of the flows that you might encounter in your college courses or in your uh, professional career. Similarly, for graduate students who are just starting out uh, with their uh, Master of Engineering or Master of Technology course, uh, this would be a good uh, introductory course. For entry-level engineers, I mean, um, a lot of times people are not exposed to some of these advanced modeling techniques. So taking a course like this would make you more uh, skilled uh, and more valuable to your employer. Uh, so if you're looking to gain additional skill set, then this is this course is very relevant to you. Um, similarly, for experienced engineers, uh, if you if you already have a few years of experience, but not directly in fluid mechanics and CFD, um, this course will introduce you to multi-phase flows and you know how to account for approach these complex problems. Uh, so if you if this would be an additional skill set to have in your toolbox uh, if you're an experienced engineer. And for prospective graduate students, I mean, if, you, if you're planning to apply to European and uh, US universities, then uh, taking a course like this would make your life much easier when you go to the grad school 
uh, you'd have a upper hand because you would you'd have already seen a lot of material that you would see in your coursework uh, by taking this course. Um, also, uh, being able to use Fluent is a fairly valuable skill when you look for internships and jobs. So completing this course would make you more attractive to potential employers. Thank you.